day five of Grappler's Retreat up here in Mendocino in the Redwoods of Northern California. What a great week it's been. We've been training twice a day. There's a mid-morning session and there's an afternoon session. So we've done eight training sessions with rolling so far this week. And we're doing a couple more training sessions today, which is a lot. I don't normally train that much in any given week. And uh, to be honest, I'm feeling pretty good. Uh, maybe between the hot tub and the fact that they keep the dojo nice and warm and we're definitely getting warmed up doing technique, it's, it's actually been pretty good. A ton of knowledge being shared here. Too much to assimilate in one week, honestly. So it's good that I've been videotaping the sessions and other people have had their iPhones out videotaping the sessions because there's just way too much material being shared to assimilate in one week. So I'm looking forward to going back and drilling some of the stuff that I've learned. You know, it's funny, you think that as a black belt, you've seen it all, but there's always more to learn. It's the details when you're improving your jujitsu, what you're looking for more is the little details that help make techniques work. Sometimes it's one detail or one tweak that you can make to the hand positioning or, or whatever in order to make a certain technique work. Uh, and I've picked up a lot of just great details this week. I always say when I go to a seminar, that if I can pick up one or two things at the seminar, then I'm totally happy, one or two tweaks. Well, every single training session, I've been picking up one or two or three or four tweaks to things that I do. So it's been phenomenal for me. Vlad's gonna come up on top of me, and he's gonna sit back for a single leg X foot block. As soon as he sits back, I'm up to my feet. Okay, as soon as he sits back, I'm up to my feet preemptively. Now what I'm gonna do, right hand is on the inside of his foot, left hand stuffs his heel towards his butt. I'm gonna hip in, okay, this gives me good base. I'm gonna clear his foot off my hip, and now I have a couple of different ways I can go. I can circle forward to this position, which winds up sometimes giving me an almost lot of, or guys post away and they get armbar here, okay? Go. Or I can come here and I can clear the foot and I can high step escape, okay? Just like so. Let's do it back and forth because I think it's better. One more time, I'll do it and then Vlad, you can do it. Long story short, you can step through or back step either one of those. See the drill? Does anyone want to see it one more time? Slow down. Everyone think they got it? All right, on three, one, two, three. The butt. Okay, back step. See how you can catch his leg? Yeah, right. You gotta get down low enough to make him do that. You do it easy, you can do that. Or step through, you step through, just stuff that leg in between your legs. So you peel, stuff, pull right through. Excellent. That's it. That's it. That's it. And here's what's really important to recognize about this. So let's say Vlad comes here, pretend I've just worked up. If I don't grab his ankle, Vlad has the ability, let's turn this way, oh, you already heard me, hold on, turn, turn to your right, so just for the camera, for everybody to see, okay? So if I don't control his angle and I turn away, Vlad's able to hide his foot here as I start to establish, and now he's gonna force me to roll, he's tagging me up here, and I'm trapped, and I'm gonna get finished, okay? So controlling his leg is imperative. I have to control his leg, so again, we get here, look, right away I stuff. And that stuff serves two purposes. I control his leg from being able to hide itself, but also I'm able to get a pull on my knee, like an exchange, right? So as I'm here, I'm able to pull that knee below sea level. Now I can let it go, I'm not too worried because I've cleared my knee. If he recovers my knee, then I'll have to go right back to it. But from here I'm pretty safe, and I can hit my sprinter's escape and completely disengage or maintain position and start to climb up on top of him or take his back as Phil was doing, okay? So keep this in mind for those escapes, okay? Next, we're gonna look at the uh, saddle position here. Escape from the saddle position. Many, many people consider this to be the deepest, darkest place to be caught and also the best position for breaking mechanics, right? Breaking my leg, breaking my ankle, so on and so forth. 
And so, what is the number one submission here? What do you believe to be? Vlad, do not get the answer. What do you believe to be the number one finish from here? Number one finish? Yes. Inside heel hook? That's correct. Okay. This is the number one finishing position for the inside heel hook. The most devastating leg lock usually is applied from this position. So, I got caught here, but I'm not fully threatened. I'm being threatened. But again, I'm in a preemptive phase. And so, what I teach my students is, if I took chalk, and I just made a straight line of chalk only on the side of my foot, the side profile of my foot, from the side of my big toe down onto my heel, I want to dust off my foot like this. I hide the exposure of my heel, because now he has to work and rotate his body to get this. Start to work to rotate his body to get this. Now I'm able to come here, back step my leg, and kick off. Okay, I'm gonna go into other escapes, but this is gonna be a drill that we enter on and re-enter on. So, I'm here, just like so. I'm in the saddle position. I'm going to turn my foot down, putting the chalk on the mat. I'm gonna clear my left leg. Look how my left leg is out of contention of his feet now. My left leg is here. He's able to hook my leg, it's not in contention. So I lift and go wide with it. From here, I bring my left heel to my butt. My knee is below sea level, and I'm able to sprint escape. I have my foot out of it. it does nothing. It needs control of my knee. Yeah. Ah, beautiful, Rick. And then it's like a And so early leg lock defense is number one, being aware of the entanglement. You have to make yourself uh, familiar with these entanglements. Single leg X, uh, outside Ashi, 50-50, saddle, and all the names. But these are, the reason these are the four most common is because they're the four most common positions to finish a leg lock from. Um, and so becoming fluent and understanding and speaking that language is key. Uh, it's called key principle, right? Key as in opening, you know, yeah, uh, opening doors. Uh, sometimes key does not go in and out because it's not turned. But once you turn it, it slides nice and easy, right? So which my heel, uh, in a, if I try to, even with a ballerina foot, right? Uh, if I try to pull, my heel gets caught uh, on his radius, right? So what I want to do, foot on the hip, elevate my butt, then will engage my body weight. Turn that key and pull out. Then my will grab my other leg. And then he will grab it a little bit harder. Squeeze it a little bit tighter. And it's, yes, so easy to pull out. However, sometimes he'll go cross side like this. Okay, so now if I turn like this, it's a huge setup on a heel hook or whatever. Uh, your rule of thumb, heel towards the rib cage. I will elevate my butt, turn my key, pull him out. He'll grab me here, elevate my hip. Just be careful so he doesn't jump on my back. Like, you, you know, you either jet or quickly rotate back to guard. Enrico Coco. Yeah, and you can do it, it's so frustrating, you know? So when you go uh, against somebody who's leg lock heavy, like, most likely that would be the mechanic grabbing your ankle, turn the heel. All right? Good. Awesome. Perfect. Sorry, Phil, you made a mistake here. Big one. Uh, like I said, uh, submitted arm should be always uh, knuckles towards your chest. All right? I don't have to apply any leverage device. This is like a kindergarten. This is so simple. So as soon as you see that knuckles towards you, all you have to do is get your arm nice and deep right by the lock. Right, guys? I say that principle all the time. Uh, we often do here. And often, even with both legs engaged, it's still not enough. Everybody fucking strong here, you know? And uh, he switches the lock in the middle. I like that. So what happens, once I choke it up, I'll just pull up and to the side, just like this. However, if Phil rotates his grip the other way around, I can no longer do the bird's beak. If I pull against that arm, uh, 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 I will not be able to take him for as a soccer and pop it. Now, I have to engage some kind of leverage device. Uh, and in my personal book, guys, and take it or leave it, I like S grip. Because what happens, remember on an uh, arm bar, my partner's elbows are going to get pulled in completely opposable directions. Like, this grip is good to suck somebody in nice and close. But once my arm starts to get uh, separated, look, look what happens with my grip. It slides, right? S grip will provide you great luck and it's designed for that opposable pull. All right? Not like that. Yeah. Uh, so, whenever I do cradles or arm bar escapes, I usually lock up like this. All right? 
Next thing I would like to uh, address crossing feet versus uncrossing feet. Right guys, who here was taught never to cross your ankles? What's the, what's the reasoning? Uh, they said if you cross your ankles you can't get as much of a squeeze. This is the dumbest fucking thing ever. It's, it's exactly the opposite. It's exactly the opposite, right? When you do head scissor or TP, where do you get your strength from knee squeeze? From crossing your ankles, right? It's completely, I mean, I can't pinch my knees, but once I cross my ankles, my pinch is gonna be goddamn tenfold. This is like, not, it, it blows my mind how many people say that, right? So I will, uh, I will, lay, I will not take authoritarian advice. Like my, my mind works, I need to know why. So if you tell me to do something very aggressively, like if you explain to me, I'm like, oh shit, all right, I was stupid, thank you. But if you cannot explain, then uh, I cannot follow the advice. So for example, if Phil was in my guard, and I was able, let's rotate this way, yes. I was able to uh, snatch armbar. So if I cross my ankles any each way, I do control the shoulder griddle. It's gonna be hard for him to pull out, but I don't control the posture, which means he can stack me, yes, and eventually wiggle, either limp out or wiggle his arm out. So if I was doing an armbar for my guard, I will hand my leg like a, like a yoke, right? So what it does, it cuts the rest of his posture away from him. Try to stack me now, Phil. And I'll sweep, right? However, once we swept the guy, our posture management is no longer an issue. Now we have to switch attention to shoulder griddle and imprison his arms in the spot, right? And how we do it is like such. Now we can post, thank you, right? I will collect the far, uh, elbow, I will pull it in and I will cross my ankles this way, right guys? This leg on top, very important, right? I pull it in like this and again, uh, you do not see it, but my squeeze is two-dimensional. I squeeze my heels to my butt, north-south, and my knees, feel it, feel it? Yeah. And uh, as a kid, we did this drill, got them religiously. I will sit just like that and I will ask my partner to escape. Go ahead, Phil, try to escape. Oh, God. My hands are not even contention. My hands are not applying any braking pressure at all. I'm just controlling the guy. So now imagine how I can engage my hands. All right. And also, guys, look. Ah, uh, what it does, what it does, uh, feel is the strongest defensively when his knuckles are to his chest and his elbows are flared. Right. Uh, normally, rule of thumb, I will get this arm in because once he starts trashing around, I need to secure his legs in spot. Nobody can trash around forever. Once he stops. I'll let go and go back to my arm lock, right? So, so that's why I whip this arm in. And normally I get it elbow deep. So watch, if I have it elbow deep, I drape my hand over my thigh and I have a great lever here. If I go wrist deep, there is no pressure, there is no tension, right? So by grabbing his arm, look what happens. His, uh, his shoulder blades come off the floor and his back is rounded. He's no longer in the same position of strength. And his lock creeps up towards me. His arms are semi-extended. And that is when I lock my feet together and pull him in. If I lock my feet like this, I will control the shoulder, but what you guys don't see, there's a giant gap between my thigh and his neck. So sometimes I employ uh, what I call winding escape, me personally. Phil is gonna start rolling back like he's doing a, a back escape, a back roll, and then quickly set up a new one. Whoop, there we go, and then he stacks me. Let's go back. So uh, the arm closest to my partner's head, again, to feel his head, right? We'll go elbow deep, nice and super. Again, I wanna kiss it, I'm like, nice and tight, just like this. And now comes the hardest part. Very intuitively, guys, we wanna straddle the center line. I wanna have one arm here and one arm here. So what I'm doing here, I'm applying a little bit of an asymmetrical body shape, which is kind of weird, it is weird, right? So uh, I wanna separate, right? See, there's a little hole, and I insert my elbow and then I will come like this. Make sure your wrists are not bent like a waiter's wrist. Very much like in kettlebell sport or uh, I'm wrestling, right? We we'll want to have straight wrist or cobras. Anytime we're here, we're very weak. It's weak and sometimes even counterproductive because I'm wrist locking myself. So nice and deep, hot, separation, drop my elbow, boom, gable. Sometimes if I was a little thicker, right? Even if I separate, there's still no fucking hole in here, right? I cannot drop my elbow. In which case, I will put my knuckles here and slide it like I'm opening or closing drawer in a desk. I'll slide it in, oh, right here. I still do not pull. If I pull, I still go against these strong grabbers. I twist. This hand 
goes towards me and this arm goes away. And I challenge, sometimes I'll get like the biggest guy, you know, in a group, and I'm like, Jimmy, hold on for your life. And I, I know, give me arm. And I pop, regrab immediately. Because sometimes I pop, I have a mini celebration, oh my God, and he regrabs, and now he will not let me get to this position. So as soon as I pop the hand open, oh, I will cover the fingers, rotate it back to perpendicular, and finish the arm ball. And the last one, and it's, uh, falls in line with Coach Mike's uh, ass mount. I love this one. It's absolutely goddamn torturous. Phil, I apologize beforehand. It will only make you tougher. <laughs> uh, I secure this one. And guys, we don't have to feed our, we, we do not have to have our feet crossed. It's just I'm saying you can if you want to, and I gave you a reason. All right, all right, good. So uh, we're here, the first thing I will do, I will lean and I cover his far hip. Because ultimately, I can control his escape like this, like this, like this, or like, like oh, any each way, it does not matter. Technique is called Galava Grut, which means uh, uh, head chest. Galava is head, Grut is chest, right? Collect both hips. And then I will open up the leg, which seems counterintuitive because he can sit up. Right, Phil? Can you sit up? I'm nervous. <laughs> <laughs> try, to, try to escape. No. It's not happening. No. I'll, I'll make it easy. See, guys, now I uh, remember the power load. The load step we did like on throws, that's my load step. Now I can rock myself, right? I can rock myself until I completely clear, not just to his center, but past his center. So I load myself on top until I come hook to this position. Phil is an athlete, he's got abs and shit, you know? So what I will do, I will creep up a little bit closer to his, you see the grimace? Because I crept up from abdominals to his sternum. Okay, then my leg comes back in, and again, does not matter how strong he is. I'm popping my lever with my form as I do sickle, Ooh. scorpion, kick, whatever the fuck I want to go, right? There we go. I don't even go back. I finish it right here. So now I have both arm bar and pressure. Once my leg clears, I can't go back and finish, but I, I like it there. There is other ways to, but those three, between those three, something will work. Last day, we're heading down to the ocean here. Um, stunningly beautiful. It's a little overcast, so it's probably not going to be quite as epic on film as it would be, but it's pretty amazing. I think we're ready to go if you want to stand up. I'm ready. 